Hi everybody, um, today we're going to do something a little bit different at SA Adventure. This is a brand new BMW 1250 Rally. Now, for those of you that know, a few things different with the Rally. The first thing is it's a normal kind of GS, it's not the Adventure, but it has the we call the sports suspension so it's basically the same as the adventure suspension on a lightweight gs which is it's really nice off-road the other thing with the rally is it's slightly down spec it's not in its electronic packages or anything like that but for example you can see here it doesn't come with the bmw plastic hand guards for example um, so there's a couple of things that it it, it doesn't have the adaptive headlight but you know what it's got a headlight it doesn't come with a cruise controller standard but we on this bike have retrofitted one that can be done so you can add it on if you want that it also comes without the navigation prep because a lot of guys that are riding these bikes off-road like us don't use the bmw system we put on for example, we use the Montana 700i series, so you don't have to pay for the BMW mount and you can add your own mount, whichever one you want to choose. It does also come with a few other things that the normal GS doesn't, i.e. the BMW crash bars. It has those on as standard. It also comes with a set of BMW driving lights, which is quite nice. It has this black beak on the front of it. It also doesn't have these sort of integrated, it's got the new style indicators, but they're not integrated where they are always on and it's actually just an indicator. This one, they actually do come with the plastic carrier rack, but we've up spec that to the Adventure one for our client because they have the aluminum top box that doesn't fit on the plastic one. So we, we had this fitted straight away at BMW. And what we're going to do on this bike today is we're going to show you a few things that we would do on our bikes to make them a little bit better off-road. So to kind of level this bike up to being a little bit more friendly off-road protection wise and so on. We believe that these modifications or these add-ons are really all you need to do to a GS to, to help protect it off-road and here's a few of the things that we're going to add we're firstly going to spec up the Garmin mount we are going to add a go gravel side stand switch and a go gravel big foot which is the side stand extender we are going to put a set of motor radical rear pillion pegs on which are a little bit better than the BMW ones especially if the pillion is in a situation where they need to stand up and their, their feet might be wet. Those rubber ones from BMW become quite slippery. We're then going to add something else here that we found recently. It's called the Uni Filter. And this is a very interesting thing. I'll explain a little bit more about it when we fit it. But they're basically pre-filters. If you're using your bike a lot off-road, and I have first-hand experience on destroying a BMW engine because... It sucked in too much dust and the air filter collapsed and ended up going through the engine. So these pre-filter the air. They're reusable, re-oilable, kind of like a enduro bike. And they go before the air filter in the ram air intakes or the snorkels. I'll show you how they fit. We're then obviously going to do a decent headlight guard. We're going to put on a set of bark busters instead of the normal BMW hand guards. The cost of these for both sides is about the same price as one brake lever from BMW. When you drop your bike over in the parking lot, usually that's the first thing that breaks. And then we always spec up a better bash plate. In this case, we're fitting an SW Motec, and that will give you solid under body protection on the bike. Right, you'll also need some tools um, to do this, but we'll show you that as we go on. Right, so the first job we're going to tackle is the bark busters. We're going to put those on and I'm going to show you how simple it is. You need a few tools um, and the bark buster is a, 
Australian product and it's an aluminium wrap around that replaces the original BMW plastic hand guards or wind deflectors which are not that good if you drop your bike over and they basically fold in and break your brake and clutch lever. Um, so all you need is the parts that come in the kit. This is for the right hand side. You've got the main aluminium piece that wraps around. You have the plastic that goes on the front. This is a black on black. You can get them in all different colors. You have the handlebar mount and a couple of screws and so on. And the tools you'll need is a ratchet with a Torx 50 socket and a number four Allen key. And it's literally as simple as bolting them on up here. I'll give you a video halfway through and then on the complete job. Right, as you can see, we have now got the Bark Buster on, the aluminium part, but I've left everything loose. You can see it's all quite loose. The reason for that is that A, it all goes together because if you tighten one part before another part, you end up battling with alignment issues, but also so that you can align it when you tighten it up, you want the bark buster to be in line with the end of the brake and clutch lever. You don't want it to be there, you want it to be there. And then you tighten it up and we'll put the plastic on. Right, there we are. You can see now the bark buster has been completely tightened up. It's very solid. The plastic wind guard has been put on. And you will now have no more broken clutch or brake levers. We'll do the other side and we'll carry on with something else. Okay, what we're going to start with next is the side stand switch protector and the side stand enlarger. It's also commonly known as a Bigfoot and what it does is it spreads the weight of the bike over a further distance than the traditional side stand that comes with it and stops it sinking into soft sand, mud, things like that. And your bike doesn't topple over. The side stand switch protector protects the side stand switch. The side stand switch is here, and that is a vulnerable part, especially in rocky terrain where you may fall over or a rock could hit it, something like that. We've had that on our tours. And if that breaks, it's very hard to bypass it. Basically what it does is it stops you starting the bike in gear when the side stand is out. It won't allow you to start it. You have to have it in neutral when you start it. Um, so if you try to pull off with this out, it'll not allow the bike, also it'll cut the bike out. So we're going to add the side stand switch to that. Basically covers this area here, protects it. And then the side stand enlarger will go on this part. And remember, you need to get the correct one. Because there are two different ones. There's the K50, which is the normal GS. And there's the K51, which is the Adventure GS. This is a normal GS, but remember, it's a rally spec. So it actually has taller suspension. So it's a K51. It's the same as the Adventure. You can tell that because the distance between the foot, whatever you want to call this, the foot stand, kick stand, and the bottom is much further distance than on a normal GS. The other thing we're going to do so we're going to adjust the gear lever slightly up. You kind of want that to be level with the foot peg. So it needs to come up just a little bit there. And that way you can get your foot under it much easier when you've got an enduro boot on or an off-road boot. So many people battle to change gears when standing up. It's because they haven't adjusted their gear lever. I'll show you how to do that. It's literally those little adjustments there. I'll give you a before. There's the side stand switch and there's the big foot and I will give you an after. Okay everyone you can see there is the side stand switch protector protecting the side stand switch very very nicely from the back and the front and then looking down we can see that we have the big foot or the side stand enlarger now fitted Next, I'm gonna show you how to adjust the gear lever up a little bit. The top nut you need to loosen, and the bottom nut you need to loosen. And remember that that bottom nut is a left-hand thread. So it's lefty-tighty, righty-loosey, as opposed to righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Let's see how it goes. 
Okay, you can see there I've cracked off the two nuts that hold it. And we can now adjust, literally with our fingers, the bar inside up and down. And that moves the gear lever up or down. Now if I take a straight edge, you can see if I place it on the pedal that the gear lever is quite a way down. We want that up and level with the foot peg. So I'm going to adjust it upwards and you will see by turning this, I can adjust it until it touches. And now I know that I'm in a line. I'm gonna tighten my nuts back up and the gear lever should be perfectly set for an off-road boot. Right, what we're gonna fit next are the pillion foot pegs. These are made by Motor Radical. That's a South African company. And as you can see, they're a lot more grippy than the standard BMW pillion foot pegs. They're made of metal. And for those of you that take pillions on the back of your bike off-road, you will know that these rubbers become very, very slippery when they get wet or they have a little bit of mud on them. And that makes it rather uncomfortable for the pillion when you need to stand up and ride because you don't want your feet slipping around. So we'll change those out for the motor radical ones. Okay, so that's the rear foot carrier with the original peg removed. And we're now gonna put the motor radical peg in. It literally just slots in like that. If you put it in in the upward position, it makes your life a lot easier than trying to put it in in the down position because then you're fighting against the spring tension to get the pin back in. Literally, you put it in like that and the pin will just slide straight back in. And there's the pin and the E-clip. Don't lose your E-clips. They're very important to keep those things clipped in. Okay, there we go. You can now see that the pin has been put back in and the peg is now ready and you can see it's got quite a nice tension under the spring so it's quite a positive lock it's not going to rattle around when you're riding your bike that's why we like the motor radical ones and i'll do the other side and then we'll move on to something else okay next thing we're going to do headlight protector very 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 important when you're riding off road you do not want a stone going through your headlight from your mate in front of you because those things are expensive to replace. This one is got various different options. It kind of folds down, you can take this off, you can have just the clear one, you can have the grid with the orange, or you can even take the orange out. Orange on headlights helps in dusty conditions, it's quite visible. This one comes with all the mounting hardware and the brackets, and there's the original BMW headlight protector, which isn't a headlight protector, it's just a headlight. And that, getting hit by a stone, is gonna cost you some money. So we always put headlight protectors on. Right, so there we are. The headlight is now protected with the headlight guard. I've left the orange on. Uh, the client can decide if he wants that on or not. But the nice thing about this is that it can actually all come down this flips down, you then have a clear cover under there, which then will actually come out of the mounts and you can remove the whole thing at the bottom as well to clean behind the headlight. It just literally pops into these rubber brackets, rubber mounts in the brackets, and it's nice and strong. And of course, the most satisfying part is always peeling off protective tape. That is the headlight guard. It clips in and it clips in here and then it's done. Next thing we are going to do the filters. I mentioned earlier on in the video about the uni filters. Now I believe that dust protection into your engine on your bike is one of the most important things especially if you are using it off-road. Um, I had an experience where my old GS had sucked in a lot of dust um, from our tours 
I usually ride at the back so I get everybody's dust and the air filter clogged up so badly that it created too much pressure and ended up collapsing and sucking all of the dirt and stones and whatever else was in it through the engine and literally destroyed that engine at just under 50,000 kilometers. Now this is an Australian product and basically it's like a cone and this is foam and you soak it with special filter oil, foam filter oil. It's the kind of filter oil you would use in a, a dirt bike or an enduro bike, the guys on the Dakar use it. Basically you can wash this out every 5,000 Ks. You could do it every single ride if you wanted to, but you wash it out with some mineral turpentine and you basically re-oil it and you put it in the bike's intakes, which I will take you to the bike and show you where they are. There's two, there's one here and there's one on this side, there. Now under there are some ram tubes and those socks fit into those ram tubes. We need to take this panel off and then I'll show you the ram tubes and how the socks actually fit. They come pre-oiled, so for the first time you don't need to oil them. Okay, so these are the ram tubes that I was telling you about that actually go straight into the air box, one each side. And obviously you can see that air comes in here and if you've got dust, it goes straight into the air box. So with these things, it pre-filters it. And as I explained, they're already oily. You can see that it's got the sticky filter oil on it. And basically these go all the way up there. You gently take a screwdriver and push them up. And then they literally fold over the front of the tube and the back of the tube. And you can see the filter oil coming out onto my fingers. Get it right around the back. And basically, that is how they go on. And they sit there, and you now pre-filter the air, and dirt sticks to the oil, and you can wash it out and re-oil re it and reuse it. So I've replaced the panel and there you can see behind the air intake now is the uni filter. Both sides are done and you can then every 10,000, 5,000 Ks, whatever you want, take them out, clean them and put them back in. Um, I thought it conducive to add that on most bikes we would of course add radiator guards but this being a rally it comes standard with radiator guards from BMW, which are pretty adequate. But if you bought a normal GS or an Adventure, your radiators will be exposed to stones. So I would highly recommend putting a set of radiator guards on as well, but on this bike, we don't need to. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the last installation for this bike, and that is a proper bash plate. If you're gonna use your bike off-road, you need to have a proper bash plate. The one from BMW is okay, but it's not great. This SW MoTeC is aluminium. It's about six millimeters thick. It is absolutely properly solid. And it actually mounts into the main stands mounts, which makes it very strong. If you look at the comparative BMW one, it's a kind of flimsy piece of aluminium, which I flattened a few times. Um, so we're going to change that for something a little more sturdy. Okay, so so far we have the original BMW bash plate and its mountings removed. You can see that underneath the bike now, there is nothing protecting it. You will also notice, maybe you can see, that I have replaced the original bushes from the main stand with the SW MoTeC one because that now has a thread in it where the SW MoTeC bash plate bolts to. So it gives a much stronger point of contact and also the bash plate is much longer. Okay, I'll now put it on. Right, and there you go. That is now the SW MoTeC bash plate for the 1250GS installed. And as you can see, it goes a long way back there. 
and that concludes this motorcycle for our client and we shall deliver it to him on Monday. I've had a lot of fun prepping it up and getting it ready and I believe that you've seen some of the valuable modifications that we've done to the bike to make it a little bit better, a little bit stronger off-road. Also put the nav mount on and it's looking good. Looking forward to getting it to our client. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and that you found it useful. Any questions, you can either email us or drop a comment below. Chat soon.